Consider a rocket that could launch and land a thousand times per year with the same level of consistency as an airplane. Isn't it incredible? That's what Elon Musk is promoting as SpaceX's next big thing. And despite the hysteria around the project, there may be some logic to the madness. Today we'll be looking at the truth behind Starship and why it is so important. So make sure to stay till the end of the video and get your minds blown away by the world's tallest and most powerful rocket ever made. Musk unveiled the first prototype Starship vehicle to a rapt audience at Boca Chica, Texas on September 28th of 2019. The 50 meter tall vehicle first teased by Musk in 2016 is designed to transport personnel, satellites, freight, or whatever else it can fit into orbit. It can lift 100,000 kilos, which is more than any other rocket currently in use, and the entire system is designed to be reusable, allowing frequent journeys to and from space. It will launch atop a massive launcher known as the Super Heavy, which is 68 meters tall. Super Heavy, which is also planned to be reusable, has 37 Raptor engines, instead of the 6 on Starship, and it will be the backbone of bringing Starship and its crew or cargo on a journey to another globe. Together they form a massive launch vehicle, both in terms of size and ambition. Starship's ultimate goal is to be able to launch up to 100 people every flight. While Musk has stated that humans might be launched as early as next year, the journey to get there, whenever such flights do occur, will be fascinating to follow, no matter how long it takes. The Starship is being developed as a series of prototypes, each with a different function. Musk introduced what is known as the Mark I prototype at the Texas event. With no passengers on board, this vehicle will use its three Raptor engines to fly to an altitude of 20 kilometers in a month or two, giving us a taste of what Starship might look like in the future. After that, SpaceX will work on a succession of additional prototypes in both Texas and Florida. The Mark III prototype will be capable of reaching orbit, with the later version capable of carrying passengers and this step-by-step -step approach with all of its achievements and mistakes represents a significant shift in the way rockets are manufactured. One key to this was a design decision made about a year ago to convert the missile from carbon fiber to stainless steel. Steel's hardness allows for a more rustic build procedure, and it costs a lot less, $2,500 per ton compared to the $130,000, or 2,031 pounds compared to 105,000 pounds. The early prototypes of the Starship will launch on their own, but the full version will launch on top the Super Heavy. Super Heavy and Starship will travel together for a few minutes before Super Heavy separates and returns to the Earth, ready for another mission, while Starship completes its task. It has a big payload bay in the front for satellite launches, as well as a hatched nose cone that opens up to release whatever it has carried into space. SpaceX claims this is the largest usable payload volume of any existing or in development launcher. With a diameter of 9 meters and a height of 19, enabling ambitious missions like enormous telescopes, Starship will most likely need to refuel with another Starship spacecraft in orbit before embarking on missions beyond Earth's orbit, such as to the Moon or Mars. SpaceX plans to land and launch the complete vehicle on other worlds after that. At this time, the specifics of the Starship journey are being kept under wraps, so yet only one person has signed up for a flight, Japanese millionaire Yusaku Miyazawa. However, Musk has already stated that entertainment will be provided on board for lengthier excursions, like the eight-month mission to Mars. When the Starship returns to Earth, steel shines once again and has an advantage over carbon fiber, and that is more resistant to the high temperatures of re-entry. To withstand these temperatures, most spacecraft require a substantial heat shield, whereas Starship will only require a thin coating of ceramic tiles. The vehicle's large fin-like devices will operate as air brakes as it re-enters the atmosphere after completing its mission, slowing and controlling its descent. Like SpaceX's existing Falcon 9 rockets, the spacecraft will fall through the atmosphere in a belly flop posture before rotating and descending vertically for a landing on the ground. However, there has been some criticism of SpaceX's approach to Starship. SpaceX has yet to address one question, and that is how the vehicle's life support system will work. Nevertheless, Charlie Garcia, a space consultant and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, believes that developing this at a later stage once the rocket itself has been sorted out makes more sense. Another concern is that the Starship and Super Heavy lack a launch abort system, which saved the lives of two astronauts on a Soyuz rocket last year. The space shuttle notably lacked a launch abort device, which resulted in a Challenger catastrophe in 1986, resulting in seven astronauts' deaths. The lack of a launch abort system, on the other hand, ties with SpaceX's ultimate ambition for this vehicle, to fly it like an airplane with minimal or no checks in between flights. Musk has mentioned the possibility of a single Starship vehicle being reused a thousand times per year. Lowering the amount of refurbishing required, something the shuttle relied on, is critical to achieving that goal. There are numerous reasons to assume that SpaceX will be successful. The firm had made a significant contribution to space exploration, 
filling a void left when government institutions such as NASA could not justify the expenditure. However, there are still a lot of questions about it. It is not rocket technology that is being questioned, but rather astrobiological concerns. If there is life elsewhere in the cosmos, the solar system is a suitable place to start looking because it allows us to touch, gather, and analyze samples in a brief period. Mars, along with some of Jupiter's and Saturn's moons, is a leading contender for housing or have previously hosted microbacterial life. However, traveling on the red planet with microbe-infested humans risks contaminating it with Earth's germs. Contamination could also pose a threat to alien organisms, assuming they exist. It may also be impossible to determine whether any bacteria discovered on Mars in the future are of Martian or terrestrial origin. By the early 2030s, a mission to return samples from Mars to Earth should be accomplished, with all collection activity conducted by sterilized robots. While such assignments carry a danger of contamination, there are strict processes to help reduce the risk. Can we be sure that while pushing the bonds of human exploration in such a short amount of time, no corners will be cut or standards will be lowered? Let me know your answers in the comment section below. Following these standards will be much more difficult once humans have arrived on the planet. Is mentioned panspermia. The theory that Mars and Earth shared material, or maybe life in the past due to asteroid impacts. He believes that no Earth-based bacterium would be able to move very far through Mars, and that any life that does exist will be very deep underground. However, he also contends that we can excavate to make room for humans underground on Mars, which would be radiation-free. Another concern is the health of the people who will be sent to Mars. Deep space is not without dangers. However, working in low Earth orbit, on the Moon, and International Space Station provides some protection from dangerous space radiation thanks to the Earth's magnetic field. Mars has no magnetic field on its own, and its atmosphere provides minimal protection from cosmic radiation. For the minimum six-month travel between planets, astronauts would need to be exposed to deep space radiation. Even though much effort is being made, radiation shielding technology lags far behind other parts of rocketry. We're not convinced it's fair or ethical to expect astronauts to be exposed to harmful quantities of radiation, which might cause serious health problems. Add to it the environmental impact of these missions, which if repeated will emit a significant amount of carbon dioxide. While there are many benefits of sending humans to Mars, the hazards of polluting the planet, harming astronauts, and causing environmental damage are pretty severe. One could argue that preventing such harm is our moral obligation. We hope SpaceX thinks about this as much as it does about its launch vehicles and we'd like to see it become a top priority for the firm. It most likely will be an expedition worth starting on once we have better radiation protection and demonstrate that Mars is entirely uninhabited, which will be challenging. At the absolute least, the corporation should wait until the results of planned life detection missions such as the Mars Sample Return and ExoMars Rover are known before sending people to Mars. If and when Starship is realized, it will represent a significant shift in the global launch sector. It would transform the way we launch and access space forever, to provide quick and reusable flights to Earth's orbit and beyond. Even if Starship launches satellites, it will succeed because it's significantly less expensive to operate than SpaceX's Falcon rockets. However, Musk's ultimate ambition has always been to make humanity multi-planetary. To have any chance of succeeding, he'll need a futuristic car that appears as if it came out of a science fiction movie. Perhaps a Starship. With that, we've come to an end. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. I'll wait for you in another video.